uh, today when the cpiml red star has given the call for launching a campaign against the manuvadi philosophy which the rss parivar seeks to uphold and establish in this country today when we are observing the birth anniversary of shahid e azam bhagat singh it is indeed ironical and also frightening that the rss parivar is trying to appropriate bhagat singh the prime minister narendra modi in his man ki baat has said that we should honor the legacy of bhagat singh it is the same prime minister who is today speaking of honoring the legacy of bhagat singh who at the helm of a government has been responsible for thousands of deaths this year in the outbreak of the covid pandemic and the thoroughly inadequate callous response of the government to it so the very prime minister the very government which is responsible for inflicting untold misery on the people and which under the cover of the covid pandemic is going ahead with its agenda of handing over the country to the corporates of resting the last remaining vestiges of rights from the farmers and the workers and handing over everything everything we have all the property that our country has to the corporates that that very government that very prime minister is today talking of upholding the legacy of bhagat singh bhagat singh who we know was a revolutionary who was a secular revol revolutionary who had called for complete independence of india and complete independence not only in the outer form not only from british rule not only apparent independence but also real independence who had called for an exploit end of exploitation of humans by humans bhagat singh who had popularized the slogan of inkilab zindabad a slogan incidentally coined by molana hasrat bhasani and popularized by bhagat singh that same inkilab zindabad slogan is dot in the eyes of the rss parivar today and all those who raise the slogan of inkilab zindabad are branded terrorists by the rss parivar are branded terrorists are branded anti nationals by the rss parivar and yet their prime minister their government dares to say that we have to uphold the legacy of bhagat singh yes it is true we have to uphold the legacy of bhagat singh but that can be done only by primarily rejecting everything the rss parivar stands for we have given the call for launching an extensive ideological campaign against the manuvadi philosophy which as i have mentioned before the rss parivar seeks to impose on our country on our people which it is trying to popularize uh before i go into that i would also uh, i would also like to take the opportunity to say that today is also the martyrdom day of uh, another great visionary uh, shankar gohani yogi who was uh, who tried to uh, organize the working class against exploitation and who was murdered by the agents of the corporates in broad daylight and whose murderers were never punished so uh hmm now about this ideological campaign against hindutva apparently all the opposition parties apparently all the opposition parties claim that they are great secularists and the bjp is the only uh non secular party 
But if we look closely, we shall see that the Sangh Parivar, the RSS Parivar, has been able to develop into this monster today, precisely because the opposition, precisely because the opposition did not bother to stick to the tenet of secularism or purposely, deliberately misinterpreted the tenet of secularism. What does secularism mean? Secularism does not mean that the state, the government, the state will look at all religions uh, with equal favor. Secularism does not mean that the state will bestow equal favor on all religions. On the contrary, secularism means that the state shall be divorced from all religion. There shall be a complete separation between state and religion. But what have our politicians done? What have all the non-BJP parties done in their so many years in power? They have interpreted secularism to mean bestowing equal favor on all religions. And naturally, when you interpret secularism to mean bestowing equal favor on all religions, you end up bestowing more favor on the majority religion than on the minority religion or religions. And the rift continues to widen. It is not possible to bestow equal favor on two things. If one is vastly major in quantity and the other is much minor in quantity, you cannot be equal to both. You cannot behave equally to both if you have to really talk of equality, if you have to really talk of equity. But what did we see? That in the name of bestowing equal favor to all religion, actually Hinduism, Hinduism as the state religion was unofficially promoted by all the non-BJP parties in power till BJP did it far more skillfully and snatched state power away from them. To give an example, in the long years before BJP took over state power, in the long years before BJP won the elections and uh, came to government, uh, any inauguration, any inauguration of a government project would invariably include the cracking of a coconut, the lighting of diyas, all the Hindu rites. This happened unchallenged. This went on unchallenged. And this went on in the name of secularism. All parties indulged in this behavior. All ruling parties engaged in this behavior. And as a result, the path for the rise of the BJP was paved. Secondly, this is the first point. Secondly, when the non-BJP parties today try to fight against the Hindutva or the non-secular uh, non-secular ideology that the RSS Parivar is trying to promote. What do they do? They end up, they end up pitting people against each other. But what do we, what do we as secularists, as communists, what do we have to bring forward to the people? What do we have to show to the people? What we have to show to the people, what we have to bring forward to the people is that the Hindutvavad of the RSS Parivar, the Hindutvavad of the RSS Parivar is by no means an ideology that will benefit all Hindus. Had it been, had the Hindutva of the RSS Parivar been an ideology that would benefit all Hindus, then today, Vast numbers of Hindus would not have been at the receiving end of the brutal anti-people policies of the government. Look at the farmers' bills. Look at the farmers' bills rushed through parliament. Three farmers' bills which the president has signed and which have now become laws, which seek to open the uh, farming sector to the corporates far more widely than ever before, 
which seek to snatch away the uh, last vestige of uh, the farmers' rights and seek to pitch the farmers against the corporates on a very unequal playing ground. So, who are these uh, new farm laws going to affect the most? It's going to affect 80% of our peasants, of our working people who are the peasants. India is uh, uh, primarily, a, it is an agricultural economy. So it is going to affect the peasants. Now, who are these peasants? Are these peasants all Muslims? Are the majority of these peasants Muslims? No, not by a long shot. So what do we see? We see that actually the policy is brought about by the BJP. The laws implemented by the BJP, the laws championed by the RSS Parivar, it is going to strike at the hearts of millions of Hindu peasants. Who are the peasants committing suicide? Who are the peasants taking to the streets in Punjab and Karnataka? Who are the peasants who are burning the burning copies of the laws? Who was the peasant who committed suicide in front of the house of the Punjab chief minister? Were they all Muslims? The RSS would have us believe that the Muslims are the enemies of this of this country. And without the Muslims, we would we would have been a happy country, we would have been a, 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 a rich country. But look at what the RSS Parivar is doing. Look at the laws it is bringing. Who are these laws affecting? The labor laws, the new labor laws, the new labor codes. Who are they affecting? They are affecting the large majority of our working population who are Hindus. So this Hindutva, this brand of Hindutva of the RSS, a brand of Hindutva which does nothing for the common a uh, religious minded Hindu man or woman which paves the way for death of the common religious minded Hindu man or woman. This is actually the nature of the, the real nature of the Hindutva which the RSS is trying to uphold, which the Sangh Parivar is trying to impose on our country. A brand of Hindutva which actually kills Hindus. A brand of Hindutva which actually kills Hindu peasants, which kills Hindu workers, which kills Hindu toiling people and of Hindu women, we shall go into that later. But this is actually the brand of Hindutva which the RSS Parivar is trying to promote. So this is something which we have to expose in the course of our ideological campaign that Hindutva do not be blinded by the promise of Hindutva or the promise of a Hindu Rashtra which the RSS is dishing out so lavishly. Actually, it will not be a Rashtra, it will not be a country for the common toiling Hindu, ma Hindu man. It will be a country for the corporate fascists, it will be a country for the corporates, in which, in which the Ambani's and the Adani's, in which the Nirav Modi's, they will hold sway. They will, take out, take, they, they will, they will rob us of all our wealth. They will take away our money. They will take away our agriculture. They will take over, take over our industry. And the common Hindu man, the common Hindu woman will be left to beg on the streets, will be left as, will be left as, will be reduced to paupers. So this is actually the Hindu Rashtra, which the RSS Parivar is trying to give you. So this is another important aspect of the offensive. The third aspect is, of course, the question relating to the oppressed sections of society. Manusriti. The Manusriti which the RSS Parivar would have us venerate. So first of all, there is no single Manusriti. At least 50 different man, uh, manuscripts of the Manusriti are available. And each manuscript is contradictory to the other. There is no one single Manusriti with one single code of uh, behavior or code of laws or whatever. At least 50 different Manusritis are available today. And naturally because when does this Manusriti date? It, it dates back to uh, the 2nd century BC, between the 2nd century BC and uh, the 3rd century AD. So it dates back to these 500 years. So who knows what, what is there actually in the Manusriti? Who can say 
that which manuscript of the manusruti is the original one no historian no historians have been able to come to any conclusive understanding any conclusive agreement as to which the original manusruti is so as i said at least 50 varieties 50 versions of the manuscripts of the manusruti are available and each are each is widely in uh, contradiction with the other uh here i would like to point out uh, before i go into uh, this point further i would like to uh just make make note of a point of interest manusruti manusruti was actually praised by the german philosopher nietzsche nietzsche had uh, said that said something like uh, turn your eyes from the bible and turn to the manusruti manusruti had been praised by nietzsche and who was nietzsche nietzsche was the philosopher who was revered by hitler nietzsche was the philosopher who was quoted by hitler in his mein kampf nietzsche was the philosopher from which the militarist fascists got their philosophical base in uh, the early years of the 20th century so fascists everywhere have a common meeting ground from the nietzsche to the manusruti from hitler and mussolini to the rss parivar to golwalkar to the rss parivar it is a full circle and we would well do well to remember the fate that was dealt to hitler and mussolini we would do well to remember what happened to hitler and mussolini you would do well to remember what happened to fascism so fascism is doomed to that fate fascists are doomed to that fate our modi and our uh, rss ideologues would do well to remember that but coming back to the manusruti coming back to what the manusruti has to say about uh, the oppressed sections of society the shudras the the women it is common knowledge it is common knowledge that manusruti uh, uh, an ancient document whose uh, veracity is questioned uh, treats women and shudras as dirt treats women and shudras as completely inferior creatures as creatures with no rights no right to education no right to property no right to anything shudras who should be completely under the thumb of the dominant castes that is the brahmins and the uh, kshatriyas and women who should be under the complete domination who should spend their lives under the complete domination of uh, men this is what the manusruti offers to women and the shudras the those who are called the shudras so this vile ideology this vile ideology seeks to take us back to an era from which human civilization has moved far ahead and how does how is it succeeding in doing it it is succeeding in doing so precisely because as we pointed out earlier as comrade k n ramchandran pointed out earlier and as i said earlier precisely because the non rss the non bjp political parties did not do what they should have done in order to promote the equality in order to promote the well being and the equality of the women and the oppressed castes they did nothing for the abolition of discrimination against women and the and the oppressed castes they did nothing to promote the glorious legacy the glorious legacy of women who fought for the freedom of the country the glorious legacy of women who fought against the caste system the glorious legacy of women who fought against op oppression and exploitation the women fighters of our country have remained in oblivion the ruling the non bjp ruling parties have allowed our women leaders our women warriors our women fighters to remain in oblivion they have done nothing to promote the glory the bravery of these women as they have done nothing to promote the glory and bravery 
the fight of the oppressed castes and that is why today that is why today the rss is finding it so easy so simple to talk of bringing bringing back the manusriti or bringing back the ideologies that reduce women and the oppressed castes to mere uh, enslaved creatures so this is another fight we have to undertake in the course of our ideological campaign against uh, the against uh, the manu manuvadi uh, ideology this is another important fight which we have to undertake to bring to the fore our women warriors to bring to the fore our women reformers our women revolutionaries who have served the country with such devoted zeal and who lie today in utter oblivion we have to bring to the fore the 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 the, the warriors of the oppressed castes who fought against the british who fought against exploitation who fought against the class the class system who fought against class exploitation and yet whose memory today has been pushed into oblivion we have to rewrite our history we have to rewrite our history by promoting the uh, the contribution the glorious contribution of the most oppressed sections of society in that history and it is not a very difficult task because there were so many le women leaders there were so many fighters from the oppressed castes who fought the feed the freedom struggle who fought in the struggle for a classless society but our patriarchal manuvadi practice have somehow sir have somehow contributed in uh, relegating their contributions to the background we need to bring them to the foreground once again in our offensive against the uh, fascist ideology of the rss parivar and the final point which i would like to uh, no i'd like to put forward two more points now one, the one is that we should do well to remember that soft hindutva soft hindutva can never fight the hardcore hindutva wadi hardcore uh, fascist philosophy of the rss so if you think that we shall keep quiet today in the face of what the rss is doing in and try to appease the larger hindu community then we shall never be able to fight against the ideology the fascist ideology of the rss which shall which is against the interest of the larger hindu community as well for instance uh, to give an example i uh, uh, i am currently based in uh, kolkata in west bengal in uh, west bengal the durga puja is a very uh, popular festival it is a very popular festival for hindus and uh, it is a very popular festival for basically all hindu bengalis so and uh, we see that people of other religions also participate in this festival with great zeal because it is uh, a four day festival and it is a joyful it's a joyful celebratory thing in bengal for many many years now so this year in the midst of this pandemic which is killing thousands of people every day more than 90000 people have died according to government records and according to non government records the number of deaths is much more the medical journal the internationally reputed medical uh, scientific journal the lancet has recently chastened the the indian government for downplaying the uh, downplaying the pandemic for downplaying the dangers of the pandemic so we know that is the state today that our government has totally failed to deal with the pandemic and uh, it is raging the numbers are rising every day it is raging so many people are dying every day so in the midst of this pandemic it would not have been unseemly if the durga puja celebrations in west bengal would have been called off 
because durga puja invariably means thousands of people out in the streets durga puja invariably means thousands of people in a festive mood out in the streets it means absolute lack of uh, physical or social distancing it means throwing caution to the winds it is it is something which happens every year but this year in the midst of this pandemic the government could have taken a decision the government could have taken a decision to call off public celebrations of this festival but the trinamool led government in west bengal did not dare to do so why did not it dare to do so it did not dare to do so because immediately the bjp would have attacked it and said that you are against hindus and also because the opposition in west bengal the opposition like the cpm and the congress which pretend that they are anti bjp which try to be anti bjp which try to put on an anti bjp posture neither of these parties put forward the demand that this year let durga puja be put on hold this year is a year of great tragedy it is a year of countless deaths it is a year of a raging pandemic so for one year let this festival be put on hold it will show no disrespect to religious minded hindus religious minded hindus do not want to see people die religious minded hindus generally are not murderous in nature they do not want to see people die the dangers of this pandemic could have been explained to the people and the government could have taken this step but no the government decided the the trinamool government as well as the cpm and the congress led opposition they chose the soft hindutva line of dealing with the hard hindutva of the bjp they chose to go ahead with the durga puja as usual and i dread to think the 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 calamity the toll it is going to take on human on human lives so this i just said this to uh, i uh, just said this to uh, give an example uh, eid was not celebrated in bengal the 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 muslim um, religious leaders they called upon the people they called upon the muslims not to congregate in the mosques during eid but to offer namaz at home but this was accepted by the muslim community at large but when it comes to a festival like the durga puja neither the anti bjp the so called anti bjp trinamool government nor the so called anti bjp cpm congress opposition have the guts to say that let us call off durga puja let us call off navratri this year so this is certainly no way of dealing with the bjp this is certainly no way of dealing with the threat of fascism which brings me to the final uh, I, i think i've overshot my time limit so i'm coming to my final uh, this thing the final the part of my uh, deliberation finally i would like to say that we have to uphold secularism for what it actually means the complete separation between state and religion and secondly we have to expose the corporate fascist nature of the rss thang parivar we have to expose the corporate fascist nature in the sense that it has no intention it has no aim of serving the hindu community at large it has no intention no aim of bringing uh, prosperity to the hindu community at large the only ones the rss sang parivar is dedicated to the only ones the rss sang parivar wants to serve are the corporates are the ambanis and the adanis and the nirav modis and the tatas and the birlas so this it is the corporates they want to serve it is international capital they want to serve it is uh, the 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 property class they want to serve so let this be a a very important part of our campaign that the rss brand of hindutva is not for all hindus leave alone hindu women leave alone hindus of the oppressed castes the rss brand of hindutva is for the corporates alone and with that once again i pay my tribute to bhagat singh who uh, was a great leader not only of the freedom struggle 
but who made popular the slogan of inkilab zindabad which is a call for revolution and revolution alone can save the day socialism alone can save the day and with that red salute to all my audience thank you shukriya comrade sharma